actually New Year's Eve and I just think that is so crazy that we're here. I don't know. I just, oh man, did this year, did this year fly by. So last minute, my family decided to have New Year's Eve here at the house and I'm not that excited about it because I was planning on just having like a mo movie night by myself because I thought I was gonna be at the house by myself. I was planning on just ordering some pizza and watching movies and going to bed by like one. <laughs> But I guess life had other plans. And you know, I guess at the, uh, at the same time, I don't mind it because uh, at least I'll still be with my family. But I'm not gonna lie, I really wish I was alone. <laughs> so as you could see, I have done my makeup. I still need to change. And I was just really reflecting on my goals in a sense because I didn't film it but earlier I did work on a vision board and a lot of my vision board is about how I want to start dressing especially because now that I feel more confident since I've lost all my weight I actually feel confident to dress the way that I've always wanted to dress because most of the time honestly as much as I tried finding clothes that fit me and everything like that I was still too self-conscious to wear the aesthetic that I wanted and so I just picked whatever I thought looked pretty and picked whatever would fit so it was like that was kind of hard and apart from that as well because I had a nine to five for eight years which from 18 to 28 I never really developed a sense of style because whenever I would go shopping I would have to shop for office clothes and whenever I wasn't in the office, I was basically just wearing band t-shirts. I never really had a good out of the office outfit that didn't make me feel so lazy, I guess. As I got older, I discovered corporate goth and everything like that. So my sense of style did start to transform a little bit into a darker aesthetic. But it was the issue outside of the office was still, that issue was still pretty big. For 2024, I really want to start focusing on buying pieces that I've always wanted to try to wear. I have to stop being lazy because let's be honest, being lazy is one of the biggest issues why I'm always just wearing sweaters and t-shirts. It's just, I just, I love being comfortable. I love being comfortable so I need to find the perfect medium of being comfortable and still looking nice and not like if I'm just wearing a big t-shirt and jeans which that's obviously I'm not gonna stop doing that but I would like to be a little more feminine if that makes sense you know I really do believe in the divine feminine but I also feel like it doesn't have to be so girly I really strongly believe that you could be in your feminine energy within your own style as well so like for example if I were to wear this t-shirt outside I would make sure that I would have like nice pants and my makeup and hair being done and that's me being in my feminine but comfortable as well you know so i want to start practice practicing that more but actually like elevating my style and i'm pretty sure my mom's gonna hate this but kind of eliminate a lot of the color that i already have in my closet i again like i really love a dark aesthetic and i think you could still have a dark aesthetic with some color and the colors that i'm comfortable with are that yellow beautiful yellow mustard look and like earth tone greens like kind of like my wall would be the lightest green that i would go to and different shades of red preferably like the darker shades of red right but i i am a goth at heart I love me some good dark wave music and I love me an all black outfit. I know that I have a lot of shirts that are different colors because those are mostly gifted to me and I do still kind of like them but I do know that they're just taking up space 
because I don't wear them as often as my black clothes or the colors that I actually named dog. I forgot where I was going to that, but this little rant situation kind of started because the people are going to be here anytime soon and I don't know what to wear, <laughs> especially because I'm just... I'm just at home so like a part of me just wants to be comfortable but I also don't want to if I have this goal I don't want to bring in the new year in a fucking t-shirt and jeans so it's like I don't know what to do <laughs> I really don't we'll see I think this is my last little talking portion of 2023 i know this video is going to come out already in the new year but this is being filmed in 2023 oh i thought that was my cat oh there he is i know this is going to be the last talking portion of 2023 so i just wanted to like rant a little bit share my thoughts happy new year i guess we'll see what my outfit is in the b-rolls of our celebration <laughs> Okay, never mind. Anyways, it is Tuesday and I've actually managed to check off a lot of my thesis work today and it's only 10.52. That is actually pretty impressive of me because I, I really thought it was going to take me a while to do these things. Honestly, that basically means that if I'm able to finish to check off everything tomorrow, then I basically have all the way into the 24th to just proof and edit <laughs> and you know that's that's just like so simple and that also means that once i hear back from my professor i also have a, not, a lot more time to work on my statement of purpose and my cv for my phd application gonna be a pretty productive first week of the year and i really hope that that sets the tone <laughs> for the rest of 2024 you know and yeah that's pretty cool so I have just a couple more pages left of notes on an execution. So I know for a fact that I'm going to finish that today. I really wanted to finish it last night, but we had a lot of guests yesterday again because of La Recalentada that we do. Basically, after a big party, someone in our family makes menudo, which is a classical Mexican dish that basically helps with hangovers <laughs> and i guess this year my mom was the one that ended up making it so 
we had guests again and I was very burnt out by the end of the day that as soon as I felt my eyes getting he heavy I just closed the book and went to sleep. I went to bed pretty early last night as well so honestly maybe that's why I was very productive today. <laughs> I actually wanted to talk about a reading challenge that I want to do for January. I'm not a big fan of reading challenges or having like a specific TBR because I am I guess you could say I'm a mood reader. My ADHD really affects like what I decide to do because I definitely have I forgot what it's called but it's basically when you avoid authority <laughs> I hate being told what to do basically and that kind of, that like low-key involves I like if I tell myself to do something I don't do it which is uh, you know obviously something I need to work on but anyways this specific reading list I wanted to do because I I originally wanted to do it for December but I just didn't have time and so January personally for me is the only other month to do this challenge. So and again sorry for the invertedness, I need to see. <laughs> this stack of books are some of the books that I DNF not just last year honestly or at least specifically for one of them not just last year but I soft DNF them because either well no okay sorry hold on let me back up for one of the three books I DNF'd it because I was I was just mad the book was making me mad and I had to put it down and I never picked it up again <laughs> but I do genuinely want to finish reading it and that book is the book of form and emptiness by ruth ozeki i talk about it in a lot of vlogs from the earlier days i guess <laughs> and i talk about my issues with this book i love ruth ozeki's a time for a tale being a tale for a time being <laughs> and i actually love ruth ozeki's writing style as well but this book the reason why it made me mad was because the main character was just he was he's such an asshole to his mom and what's worse like the way that i feel about it is that he's i think an eight-year-old boy and like maybe 10 the oldest and he's obviously autistic so i'm just like i need to be nicer because i personally don't understand how autism affects the emotions and i also understand that little kids process their emotions differently because they are both going through grief because his dad died this isn't a spoiler it's in the synopsis but the father passed away and they're both dealing through grief differently but the little kid just infuriated me so i told myself i would put it down and then pick it back up <laughs> and i did and it lasted all year so i decided to give it a second chance this is over 500 pages and so I'm kind of stuck between starting completely over or just picking up where I left off because I actually do remember everything that has happened up to where I am. I think I might be in the middle of a chapter, so if anything, I I'll start over the chapter. I remember mostly everything. So I definitely am going to start from where I left off. I don't know, we'll see. This might not even be the first book I read for this challenge anyways, but this is the reason why it's DNF. And I want to give it a second chance because I genuinely like this author. So this is the first book in this challenge. The rest of these books, I just, I don't know. I think it was like an executive function issue that I was going on while I was reading it. And which made me not really connect with the writing style of it, if that makes sense. So the oldest book in this stack is actually Bunny by Moana Awad. And I know, I know this is such a famous book and everybody loves it and it's so popular and it's so good. But for some reason, I just can't get past. No, but for some reason, I just can't pick it up. And again, it's not because I don't like, like the writing style is great and everything. And I'm actually really interested after I've read the synopsis. But like, I'm gonna blame executive dysfunction on this book. I just... For some reason, I just can't pick it up, but I'm feeling a lot better since I first tried to read this book, and so I'm hoping that I can actually finish it. <laughs> this next book, I think I just had too high of an expectation for it, that the writing style was completely out of left field, and not just the writing style, but I guess like the topics and how it was written and that is girls against god by jenny ha haval 
who is the author of Paradise Rot. And Paradise Rot is actually another novel that's on my that I want to read later. I just haven't bought it. And you could see that uh, I technically had, didn't go this that far into this book, but I picked this up in October for my just to read speak spooky books for the holiday season. While it did have some horror elements in it, it wasn't as scary. Like this is definitely more literary fiction horror, I guess. And it just it just wasn't what I was expecting and I wanted to read something spooky and and so on and so forth. So, I think it was just a wrong time, wrong mood situation. Honestly, honestly, I really want to give it a second chance because of the cover as well. <laughs> so, this second chance. Hi, Fishy. He is standing on the next book, so I'm going to have to wait it out. <laughs> Are you smelling food you're not supposed to eat? Yes, Fishy. Okay, bye, Fishy. And the last book is actually the most recent book that I soft DNF'd and that it is Woman Eating by Claire Coda. <sighs> Look how beautiful this cover is. Ugh. I think that is so funny. Ruth Ozeki actually blurbed this book. So I think it's funny that they're both in this list. This was definitely another instant or a combination of wrong time, wrong mood, and expectation, unrealistic expectations. I knew that this was technically literary fiction, but I think because I knew that it was also about a vampire, I was expecting, I don't know, I was expecting it to be a little more fast paced. So what made me stop reading this was just how slow paced it was in the first section of it. And I, I leave my bookmarks specifically for this so like I can know where I left off and what was it about it that made me stop reading it. Apparently I stopped in the middle of a chapter. Yeah, so I was only one chapter. Okay, so I hadn't even started chapter two where I'm, ass where I'm assuming the best of the book starts. I had high hopes for this novel, but now that my expectations, I think, have settled into a more realistic realm, I genuinely believe that I by that by giving this a second chance, I'll actually really like it. So I think I might actually start off with this with this one specifically. Uh, so I'll let you guys know in another clip which one I start off with, but that is my reading challenge for January, kind of to start off this year with a bang in a sense. I don't know. I Like I said, I really wanted to do this in December since these are all books that I DNF'd in 2023, but new year, fresh start, second chances is the theme for this challenge basically <laughs> i am back and i don't think i have any b-roll in between my last clip and this clip but time has passed as you could tell that i've washed my hair don't judge me for wearing the same shirt i have finally finished notes on an execution and i had to sit with my feelings for a while because there were a lot of feelings <laughs> So in this novel, we are following serial killer's last couple of hours before he is executed by lethal injection. And in between those hours leading up to his execution, the story unfolds of from the beginning that he was born to each girl that he killed and other players that basically are involved with innocence with the choices that he made and basically this entire novel talks about the ambu- the ambu- oh my god <laughs> ambu- giddy? Am ambiguity there you go this novel, <laughs> this novel talks about the ambu- oh my god Ambu ambiguous ambiguity the ambiguity how morality is in black and white and essentially there everybody has good and evil in them and nature versus nurture type situation and it really covered those strong themes in a way and it was beautiful writing 
that just made me really emotional. I think it's the best word that I could say. This was a slow read for me because I kind of had to stop reading it at some points just to reflect on certain passages that beautifully written and actually got me thinking. I can't remember if I actually said this in a video clip or if I just wrote it in the Discord server, but I usually just highlight books if I feel like it when it comes to annotating books. I fully, fully annotate if it's just school related, but when it comes to friend reading, I just, I just like to highlight any passage that I like. But this is the first or one of the first novels that made me wish I had a pen with me and just have a conversation with the novel just like throw my thoughts with whatever I highlighted on it if I ever reread this anytime soon that's what I'll probably do it's just honestly this book really left me speechless in the best way possible this theory I guess there is no such thing as good or evil. Instead, we have memory and choice, and we all live at various points on the spectrum between. We are created by what has happened to us, combined with who we choose to be. I feel like that is a good quote to summarize what this book is about. And that was just flipping just to find a quote. <laughs> so for anybody who finds this video, I 100% recommend this book. This was so good. Going back to my January challenge that I had mentioned in the last clip, I finally decided on what book I'm gonna read. I need to, a tonal shift because that was just a little too serious for me. So I'm going with Bunny. Not just because it is the oldest in the stack of books that I'm going to try to reread and give a second chance, but also because apparently this is a very unhinged novel. So I'm expecting a fun wild ride and hopefully it would get me out of this very deep philosophical hole that I have accidentally thrown myself into. <laughs> this is the end of this video and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your time zone and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!